If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. So, Gitaxian Probe was banned, and I've been thinking for a good bit if you were to try to fix Gitaxian Probe, how would you go about doing that? Now, I'm assuming for the purpose of this discussion that we're going to try to keep Phyrexian mana in there somewhere, because we already have a non-Phyrexian equivalent, basically, peak, and I'll get to that in just a moment. I like to think of there being four types of Phyrexian cards. The first ones are the ones that are original, and by Phyrexian I mean those using Phyrexian mana, by the way. The ability to either pay a mana of a given color, whatever color the Phyrexian mana is, or two life. So, the first category, those that are original, like a Spellskite or Birthing Pod, these are effects that, yeah, they may be hearkening back to another card, like Birthing Pod could be Court of Calling, for instance, but they operate very differently from those cards. And those are all into their own, they're not really part of this discussion. The second category would be those that are strictly better than the card on which they're based. So, for example, uh, Marrow Shards is strictly better than Reign of Blades. There's no reason to run Reign of Blades, but you can run Marrow Shards. They're the same thing, except you can pay two life instead. They're both instants, they both deal one damage to each attacking creature, you get the idea. Noxious Revival is probably strictly better than Reclaim. Reclaim only lets you target your graveyard and put it on top of your library. Maybe I'm missing something, though, because of that wording, but it's probably the case that Noxious Revival is strictly better, and even if it's not, it's still potentially zero mana. That also doesn't really hold here. The third category would be the one that uses what I call baseline theory, and I think from this description you'll understand. Take a baseline effect, and then if you want to add something to that, you need to take something else away in order to keep this balanced. Now, you have to start off with a balanced card, first of all. If you're starting off from an imbalanced point, you don't work baseline theory the way that I just described it. You want to start uh, taking things away from it. So, for example, Treasure Cruise starts with a baseline of Ancestral Recall and then tries to make it worse. Now, you can go too far, you can go not far enough. Shared Discovery sees basically no play. Treasure Cruise is restricted in Vintage. <laughs> you get the idea. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the ability to take a baseline for a balanced card, give it something, and then take something else away. So for example, take Giant Growth. One mana, green mana, plus three plus three to target creature until end of turn. So Mutagenic Growth is based on Giant Growth. In order to make the cost cheaper potentially, either green mana or two life, you need to take something away, and that's why mutagenic growth only gives plus two plus two. So you get the idea from there. So uh, gut shot, for instance. Gut shot is based on shock or lightning bolt, you get less damage for a potentially lower cost. Corrosive gale is based on windstorm, sorcery speed, but now you can pay Phyrexian mana instead of having to pay green. Uh, surgical Extraction is based on Extirpate. You can pay potentially less mana, but you lose Split Second. Uh, Apostle's Blessing is a little different. It's not a cost reduction. I mean, it is, but it's also changing the way that it's worded, too. Razor Barrier, which is what Apostle's Ble Be Blessing <laughs> is based on, lets you target a permanent you control, not just a creature. And, of course, one mana, potentially. So pay Ink Moth for it instead of having to have two mana. Given all of that, it's easy to see where Gitaxian Probe is coming from. I think everyone by now knows at this point, it's peak. Gitaxian Probe is based on peak. It's sorcery speed, but now you have the choice to pay just two life instead. Now, we've already decided, it seems, that Gitaxian Probe is too strong. So, what can we do to change Probe? We can't make it an instant. That would make it even better than it already is. And if we're working from the baseline of a one-mana instant, we definitely can't make it even better. And we've already decided that a two life or one mana sorcery is too good. We could change the wording on it, perhaps, to take away the ability to look at your opponent's hand, but at that point it just simply becomes 
a straight wraith that you cast, that's usually worse because this one you can actually counter, notwithstanding stifle and whatnot. So then there's a fourth category, actually, of Phyrexian cards. That would be the category containing the ones that are meant to give another color the ability to do something that's typically in a certain cut-off part of the color pie. In other words, if I'm playing Merfolk, I can now play Dismember. I now have the ability to play this kill spell. It'll cost me four life, it'll feel like a bad snuff out, but I at least have the choice to do that. So Dismember is based on Disfigure or Grasp of Darkness, that type of effect. Yeah, it's potentially overcosted, but it's color shifted, right? You can not color shift it, it's Phyrexian. You can play it in other colors. Maybe a better example is uh, Act of Aggression is the Phyrexian Act of Treason. You're paying three mana one way or another, but you don't have to pay red. You can, or you can just pay three mana of any colors and four life, and you get the Act of Aggression of, or Act of Treason effect. Norin's Annex is based on ghostly prison. It's not exactly the same text, of course, uh, but when you get to a certain point in the game, it can be better because they'll either have, either have to pay life or white mana, and if they're not a white deck and then if they don't have enough life, they can't win through combat anymore. But the point here is that if you wanted to, if you wanted to keep Gataxian Probe around, to fix Gataxian Probe, this fourth means gives us an option, actually. You could take the card peak, use it as your baseline. This time, don't lower the cost. You're actually going to kind of raise it. You could take peak and turn it into same speed, it's instant, same exact effect, but make it one and blue Phyrexian mana. Now, does that card make the cut? Probably not. This gives any color the ability to run an instant speed cantrip for the low, low cost of two life and one mana. That's the trick. And one mana. Would that be too good? I really don't think so. Uh, the blue decks would not want... It would just be a worse peak for the blue decks. For colors that don't get a lot of draw power, maybe. This could find its way into a red deck, I suppose. As a replacement for whatever your worst burn spell is, or maybe take out a land, just to make yourself more consistent on that front. First thoughts, but if you were to try to fix Gitaxian Probe, you, there's probably not a way using Phyrexian Mana to make it either it to make it perfectly playable. It's probably going to be either too strong or too weak. Peaking Probe, Gitaxian Peak. There we go. Is probably about as close as we can get right now. Then again, I also haven't changed the text on the card. Maybe there's a way to go about that way go about it. Alright, that's it. Take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Bye-bye.